Hey there, movie lovers. My name is Lane and welcome to Film Finder, your new recommendation destination. Our goal here is simple. We'll be talking about an old and new film each episode and give you our honest opinion on each of them. Our hope is that you'll be inspired to give these films a shot and build your own opinions on them. Let's get started. In the last episode, we talked about Hocus Pocus and how it wasn't the best film and how, well, we hope the sequel learns from its mistakes. Well, 29 years later and we have been blessed, I, I mean cursed, with Hocus Pocus 2. In the sequel, we see two young women, Becca and Izzy, accidentally bring the Sanderson sisters back to modern day Salem. Together, they must find a way to stop the witches from wreaking havoc on the world once again. Speaking of Becca and Izzy, these two characters are leaps and bounds more interesting than the protagonists of the first film. It is even due to how hashtag relatable Disney had made them. These ladies know how to act and help guide the humor of the film the whole way through. While the protagonists this times are, well, great, we all know this is still the Sanderson sisters film. Midler, Jessica Parker, and Ajimi jumped right back into the swing of things and makes it like 29 years haven't passed since the last time we saw them together. Not only do we see these sinners experience the magic of modern technology, we also get an in-depth look of how the sisters got their start as the most powerful coven to ever exist in their fictional world, that is. This film used the nostalgia factor well, but also builds off the world created in the first film and makes a story with actual heart, well-rounded humor, and a really cheerful ending. Everybody gets to shine in this film, and we here at Film Finder are here for it. We give this film a 7 out of 10. It isn't often a sequel surpasses the original, but with better quality and better care, Hocus Pocus 2 makes a marvelous addition to end off spooky season. Spooky season's over? I didn't even get to trick or treat! Moving on from Halloween, our next film is definitely in theme with fall, and it's also my personal favorite. May I introduce to you Fantastic Mr. Fox? This Wes Anderson wonder is actually based on the book of the same title, written by Roald Dahl, you know, the same guy who did Matilda, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James the Giant Peach, the BFG, all those classic. After 12 years of countryside bliss, Mr. Fox breaks a promise to his wife and steals from evil farmers Bogus Bunsen Bean on fat His actions then endanger not only his marriage, but also the lives of his family and their animal friends. When the farmers force Mr. Fox and company deep underground, he has to resort to his natural craftiness to amend for his mistakes. Now, if you've ever seen a Wes Anderson film, you know exactly what to expect. If not, get ready for quite the experience. This film is quite random at times and filled with character details and dialogue that's not traditionally necessary for a movie. We assure you though, this is just the style of Wes Anderson. His humor is sometimes hard to get used to, but once you do, you can't help but laugh during every single scene. Since it is based off of someone else's work, Anderson does still follow the story, so he doesn't get as weird as he normally does. But the fact that it's also made in stop motion allows more creative freedom for the film, and it's beautifully crafted in each scene as it looks just amazingly fallish. This film does a few things differently than most films. First off, it's a kids movie, yet a lot of what's going on in the film is something you would see in a more adult film. Anderson successfully creates a kids movie that adults don't just have to tolerate, but can enjoy themselves. Though to be real, I doubt the whole cussing scene actually went over kids' heads. Maybe you just went over my head. Your comments are valuable, but I'm gonna ignore your advice. The cuss you are. Are you cussing with me? No, you cussing with me. Don't cuss and point you're at me. You're gonna cuss with somebody, don't you're you? not gonna- <laughs> Just by the tree. Okay. Secondly, unlike most movies, the main lesson of the film is not as much for the audience as it is for the main character. With a star-studded cast and a visually pleasing world, hilarious memorable dialogue as well, we here at Film Finder give this film an 8 out of 10. Fantastic Mr. Fox is in fact fantastic, and we recommend giving it a chance. You may hate Anderson's style, or he just may be your new favorite filmmaker. <whistles> now it's time for Movie Check, our quick trivia for true fans of cinema. Fantastic Mr. Fox takes on the style of stop motion animation, which can sometimes be hard to spot in a CGI world. Let's see if you can tell what is fake and what's sort of fake. Which of these films is also filmed in stop motion? You have 20 seconds to answer starting now. Time's up, the answer is B, Coraline. Coraline was created by Leica Studios, which specializes in stop motion. They have also been used to create films such as Kubo and the Two Strings, Corpse Bride, The Box Trolls, and Paranorman to name a few. 
I shouldn't watch Paranormal in the spooky season. I have to wait another year. This concludes the episode of Film Finder. We hope you enjoyed your time with us today, and we will see you all soon with some new movies to add to your ever-growing watch list. Have a good one, folks. Yeah, it was it was a little, but it's okay. We it's, it was saved ish, and also there's always post production. <laughs> always it always make always helps. Just like that, oh, we'll get in post. Don't worry. <laughs>